Hey everybody, Carl Schuch here from Snorkel.tv and today I just want to build a fun little file that's going to allow us to randomly scale some of these inner movie clips in these tiles that you see here. And uh, what's going on here is that every so often a random amount of the tiles will either scale down or scale up. So we're going to show you how to loop through all these tiles, figure out whether or not they need to scale down or scale up, um, and just show you how, with using Flash, you can build these fun little, totally random experiences. And of course, with the help of Green Sox Tween Light. Now, as an added feature today, we're also going to be looking at how this can be built, or we're looking at the fact that this can be built using um, JavaScript and CSS transitions. Uh, my buddy Matt took up the challenge of trying to build this exact same thing uh, without using Flash. So if I right click here, you'll see we just get an inspect element. It's not the Flash player here. And he did an absolutely awesome, fantastic job of doing it. Now I know these days there's all this Flash versus HTML5 war going on. And quite frankly, I'm interested in seeing how both of these tools work. Um, as we know with the release of Wallaby, um, you can now take your Flash CS5 FLAs, export your animations as HTML5 slash JavaScript slash CSS slash jQuery slash whatever they use. Um, so it's really going to be up to the tools you are comfortable with and uh, how many screens you can get your stuff onto. Right now, you know, Flash player uh, saturation is pretty big compared to the amount of browsers out there uh, that can run the stuff. And, and Matt says that this will only work in Firefox 4, Safari, and Chrome. And again, he wasn't trying to build it to work on everything. He wasn't trying to build it to put Flash in the ground. I didn't build my thing to destroy JavaScript. Um, it's really just, you know, a little experiment to see, hey, what things can we do using both platforms? And uh, each have their pros and cons. So definitely check out his site. We'll talk about this more a little bit later. Uh, he did a great job. All right, back to me. This is what we are going to be talking about today, all right? Getting a grid of tiles, looping through them, and just doing this random, fun, pulsing animation. Now, um, in the example we're going to be looking at today, I am going to be start cheating a little bit, and I'm going to be starting out with some tiles on the stage, all right? I have some good stuff coming up in the future about how we can programmatically create a grid based on the number of columns and rows you may want. Um, but I didn't want to confuse the fun, easy stuff with the more sort of challenging code. So we'll have a tutorial on that soon. Right now, what we're going to do is just take a grid of tiles, keep it small, and tell them, hey, you know what, each of you is randomly going to do something. So here's my starter file. That looks great, doesn't it? Um, here's the dynamic grid creation FLA that you just saw. Okay, so what we would do here, once we have our tiles on the stage, is we want to loop through them and tell each one to check to see whether or not it's inner tile. So here we have a grid called Tile Container MC, and inside of there I have a variety of subtiles. So I want to point out that none of these tiles have instance names. All I had to do was create the grid, and my code is going to know to loop through all these child elements. And inside of each tile symbol that we have, there's this thing called front MC. And that's the one that's going to be scaling up and down to get our pulse effect. All right. Um, I drew this grid using the Art Deco tool. And just so you can see, I have an untitled document here. You know, we will be making program grids programmatically soon enough, but using the deco tool, I can just say, hey, you know what? Let's choose for our symbol here my tile. I'm sorry, this little window popped up over here. Hit OK. And I'm going to say, you know what? Let's space you each 10 pixels by 10 pixels. And then, boom, you get the grid that will fill in the stage as best as possible. This comes into a group. So what I would do is break it apart, select all of them, and put them into a container. And that's what we have here in my tiles on stage clip. Right, we got tile container MC. So inside of tile container MC, again, we have all these different tiles that we're going to be talking to. So let's look at the code that I have so far. And a lot of this is, you know, fairly basic stuff. And we're importing the green sock 
classes, and we're going to be using the scale plugin, so I'm activating that plugin to be used with tween light. I'm also already figuring out how many tiles I have. Um, by using the display list, I'm going into that tile container MC and just asking for the number of children. So it's coming back and telling me I have 21 or so children. I'm also using a timer right now to call a function that's going to do all our animation over and over and over again. And I'm calling that every 650 milliseconds. And we're going to also, and I'm calling it 600 times. Okay. So I'm calling the function that's called fade sum, and then I'm starting my timer. I didn't want to have to do all this code hand by hand for you. The meat of this is going to be in the fade sum function that gets run every time that timer ticks. Okay, and we're just tracing off the word fade sum so that I know that that um, function is running. So let's just see what we have there. I'm going to comment something out. And you'll see that fade some, fade some, fade some. So we have an automatic process running in the background that's calling a function over and over and over again. The next thing I'm doing is I'm looping through all of the tiles inside that container. So I'm just setting up a loop that says, hey, you know what, we're going to start our counter at zero. We're always going to check to see if the index or counter is less than the number of tiles, which again is based on how many tiles are in tile container. And here, for in this loop, we are picking out each tile. I'm setting up a temporary variable called current tile that goes that refers to whatever is inside tile container MC at the current index of value of i, I should say, and we are casting that as a movie clip. So if I just put this trace back in here that says trace current tile, you will see that we get this. Every time that function runs, it just says movie clip, movie clip, movie clip, movie clip, movie clip, movie clip. So it knows that it has all of these movie clips inside of tile container. So what we would do next is try to target each one of those individual tiles and tell it to do something. So just to show you that this is working, I could say something like, hey, current tile, your alpha is going to be equal um, math dot random times, no, just math times dot random is fine. And then now you'll see that over and over again, each tile has its alpha changed. And this effect can be sort of cool, but we really want to blow it out with some animation. Now, the trick here is that we're not going to be animating every tile all the time. All right, let's look in my finished file here. And you will notice that some tiles don't move, all right? The beauty of this effect is the fact that only certain things are animating. So when we are looping through all the tiles, we're going to give each tile basically a 50-50 chance of whether it's going to have any animation. So to do that, we're going to put a little conditional statement in, not in that file, in this one here. And we're basically, right, where it says do random stuff here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if, not capital, if math.random returns a number greater than 0.5, then I'm going to do some sort of a tween. And I'm going to say tween light 2 um, current tile dot front MC. That's the darker clip inside of the tile. And I'm going to say let's take one second. And let's change your scale property because I'm using the tween plugin, uh, sorry, the tween light plugin called scale. I don't have to set the scale X and scale Y. I can just say, let's set you to zero. And that will automatically tween along the scale X and scale Y. So let's give that a shot. And now you will see that randomly some clips shrink. All right, the thing is, over time, all the clips are going to get down to zero, and then there's going to be nothing to see. I want to be able to toggle back and forth, down to zero, up to one, etc. So let's watch this one more time. You'll see that some clips tween, then some others, then some others, then another. So here we have that sequence that keeps getting fired over and over again. But once everything's down to zero, we're sort of stuck. So once I decide that a clip is going to be tweened, I also need to know whether or not it needs to scale up or 
scale down. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set up a little variable. I'm going to say var scale to is going to be a number. And here, this variable can be one of two things. And I'm going to do an inline conditional statement here. I'm going to say, hey, if current tile, tile dot front MC dot scale X is equal to one. So that means if it's big, use the question mark, then I'm going to return a value of zero or else I'm going to return a value of one. So here we have some shorthand conditional logic busted in here. I'll leave that equal statement. And it just says if current title tile front, if it's scale X equals one, then we're going to tween to zero or else that value will be one. So I'm going to put now that variable right there. And here we got it. Everything pulses really nice. If a tile is big, it gets small. If it's small, it gets big. And if we want to slow this down a little bit, all we have to do is go into our little timer here. And maybe I'll do this every uh, one and a half seconds. I probably should have slowed that down from the start. So now some shrink, some grow and shrink. And it's just a total random experience. And what we're going to be doing moving forward is showing you again how to make a dynamic grid in this file here. Again, no tiles are on the stage at all. When we test the movie out, it just puts them all in a grid and the thing just is off and running to the races. Uh, you'll notice in this finished version here that some clips have a permanent alpha that's a little bit off than the other ones. Well, we randomized that too. So let me just go over to my cheat file here and I'm going to be grabbing this function here going into my code. And when we set things off at first, wrong file, Carl, let's do this. This little loop here is just going to say, go through all the tiles, just like we did inside our fade sum function and tell some of them that they're, tell all of them to randomly adjust their alpha. So now, you'll see that we have just this nice little variance of fades for all the objects. And every time you watch this, it's going to be something different and it can be quite mesmerizing. And again, we can adjust the speeds, do whatever we want. So back to the uh, versus JavaScript war. Let's go back to Google Chrome and let's do a reopen a closed tab. There's mine. And here we have, isn't that great in Chrome? You can just, if you close some tabs, boom, they come back. I love it. All right, here's Matt's JavaScript version. You definitely want to check out matthewlean.com slash experiments. And what that will do is get you to his experiments page where he does a lot of cool stuff. Always click on more uh, with JavaScript, the canvas tag, you know, just testing what our modern browsers can do. Make 200 balls, runs like, buttery smoothness. So check those out and definitely, you know, check out his way of doing the uh, pulsing tiles. You can do a view source, check out the code. Uh, it's pretty cool. You know, I favor the ease of working inside the Flash IDE um, so I can draw actual rectangles with rounded corners and uh, test things very quickly. Um, but, you know, there are going to be advantages to doing some of this stuff in JavaScript with CSS transitions. Uh, once the browsers all catch up. All right, guys, check it out. Enjoy the conversation, and uh, I'll see you soon.